It's time for Print and Play 3D Printed Mini Arcade Cab Video 2. So last time we got everything connected, mocked up, and we got our game working. This time we're going to button everything up and put it in the cabinet. Now I did have to backtrack a little bit in this video. So you might want to skip to the end and check that out first. Because I didn't have any audio when I put everything together. There was some sort of bug with the software, but I was able to get it corrected. I had to open the cabinet back up and plug it into the network and log in SSH, so you might want to go ahead and do that first. Other than that, this should be a pretty step-by-step -step method. So, let's get back to building. Now we're going to build the plate that goes on the back. This is going to hold your power jack, your power button, and your audio amplifier. So we're going to get these mounted. We'll have some soldering to do. We are going to solder some pins on the audio amplifier. We'll get to that in a second, but let's just build it slowly. So this is the inside of this plate. The amplifier lives here. So the power jack goes right there. And then you can put a nut on it from the back. Usually it'll just kind of start itself. You might have to reach in there with something. Now our power jack's in there. Pretty much the same thing with the switch. It's going to go right here and we'll thread it through the back. And our amplifier is going to mount over here, but we're going to put the pins on it first. Let's go ahead and do that. So on this amplifier, you're going to have your speaker connections over here, these four. You're going to have your power in right here in the middle. And then you're going to have your audio in. You have your left, your right, and your ground. So we need four pins, two pins, three pins. We're just going to solder all those on. All my header pins are on. It can go ahead and slide in here just like this. And we can put this nut on the other side to hold it on. Like so. Now I'm going to take a small piece of red wire to hook up from the power jack to the switch just to interrupt the power so we can turn it on and off. So I'm going to go from the center peg to this arm over here, like so. Now I'm going to take a couple of the female to female jumpers and cut them in half. You need two longer ones. I'm going to use red and black and two shorter ones. The two shorter ones are going to power the audio amplifier. The two longer ones are going to go to the bottom of the unit to power the orange pie via the GPIO. So I've soldered the two black ones together and the two red ones together. The black ones can go on either one of these pins. I'm just going to use the inside one right here, like so. And then the two red ones are going to go on the other side of this switch right there, like so. Now on your audio amplifier, we're concerned about these two pins right here. From this view, this one is the positive pin. This one is the negative pin. So our short DuPont connector one coming from the switch, the red one, will go to the positive, and the one coming from the power jack will go to this side, the negative. These longer ones, again, they go to the orange pie. I'll show you that in a minute. Now we're going to hook up the speakers. I'm going to use these jumpers again, just cut the other end off. I'm going to solder them to these terminals. These do have polarity. You can see it here on this little plastic cardboard piece. Now we've got the leads on the speakers. Those will plug into the pins on the amplifier that we added, but we can do that during final assembly. Now we need to get some audio to the amplifier from the Orange Pie, and it has an eighth inch jack on it. And I'm not a big fan of doing this, but we're going to cut up this cable. This is what James does in his tutorial. We'll see how it goes, but basically I'm going to cut off this and try to get all three wires out of there and get them ported over to a plug where we can put them on the pins on the amplifier right there. Inside that cable, you have three extremely tiny wires. And I'm going to attempt to solder these three jumpers onto those wires so that we can use these pins on that header. Not only are these wires really small, they all have insulation on them, so you can need to scrape that off with a razor blade before you can solder them together. And I was able to get them soldered, and I do appear to have continuity. This blue wire is for the left speaker. That's going to be the end of the collar. This green wire should be the right wire. That's the center collar. And then this purple one should be common, the inside collar. So it's working right now. I don't know for how long. I would like to come up with a different solution for that, maybe by an adapter or a solder on terminal. This just isn't going to work for very long. But we'll put some heat shrink on it, and we'll see what we can do. So I'll put some smaller sections of heat shrink on the outside. I'm going to put a larger one over this to see if we can get a little bit of rigidity. And that's about as good as we're going to do for now. Let's go ahead and mount the orange pie to the base. These are some pretty small screw holes. You might want to drill them out to 3 millimeter. I found some 2 millimeter screws. They're real tiny, but they do work. So I'm going to go with that. But you might want to find something a little bit different. The pie's in there. I probably should have found some wood screws instead, but these 2 millimeter ones seem to work okay. They're just really small. But it's sturdy. We can go ahead and mount our speakers. They go right here and over here on the other side. This one, definitely put these pins facing up. You don't want them to interfere with your GPIO. 
I'm just going to install them with the side of the cab laying down and the speaker setting in there. We'll let gravity do the work. And James says we can just use some hot glue on there, so that's what we're going to do. Just go easy with the hot glue around that PLA. It will melt it. Just a couple of spots around the speaker should be enough to hold it in. You don't have to get crazy with it. Same way with this other side. We'll just hot glue that in. And that one should be good. Let's go ahead and hook up our speaker output. They're going to go on these pins right here. This is the right negative. This is the right positive. This is the left positive, and this is the left negative. So the left speaker negative wire goes right there. Left speaker positive goes right here. Right speaker positive goes next to that. And then on the outside, right speaker negative. Right there. Now we can do the audio input. Common is in the center. Right is over on this side. Left is over on this side. So I wired my common one up to the purple wire. That one goes in the center. My blue one goes to the left wire. That's over here. Right like that. And then my green one goes to the right wire. Right there. And then to power up your orange Pi, we're going to feed the power into the GPIO. So from the power switch, your open power lead, it's going to go to a 5 volt pin. That's the number 2 pin. It's on the top row, the very outside, on the very last pin right here. And then your ground pin that's on the other side of the DC connector goes on the other row all the way to the last pin. This is pin 25. That's your ground pin. This is what's going to power up your Pi. I'll get you a little better shot of that. Power pin, ground pin. You don't want to mix those up. That could ruin your Pi. And once that's hooked up, everything on our connector board here is done. So we can go ahead and slide this into the case, right like this. And that's a pretty good press fit. You probably don't need any glue or anything like that at all. Then we can go ahead and finish up our audio. We'll plug the eighth inch jack right here. Now let's go ahead and finish up our screen. It's important to remember during the install that this cable is down, so you'll get it in the right direction. This is your bezel. It has a spot for that cable. So it'll sit in the bezel just like this. And it is a pretty good press fit. And I'm just going to put a few dots of hot glue on the corners to get it to set in there. I don't want to go crazy just in case we ever have to remove it. So you're going to want this controller as low as you can on the screen without messing up this ribbon cable. We also have this support to keep the solder joints from contacting the back of the screen. We don't want it to short out. And then we can screw it on this plate. So I'm going to locate mine as low as I think I can about right there. Again, I'm just going to put a little hot glue on here to keep it in place, like that, and then the controller board can set up here like so, and I'm going to use a couple more of those 2 millimeter screws to tighten it down. Now seeing the clearance on this plug for this HDMI and this screen, and I'm going to go ahead and plug in this side first. We'll just have to worry about the Pi side when we get there. But this isn't going to go in very well if that isn't connected. So we're coming up to the home stretch here. Let's go ahead and plug all of our USB in. So we'll plug the controller over here. Again, it doesn't matter where you plug it in. Just make sure if you unhooked any of the buttons, they need to go back in the same spots since we've already programmed that. We can go ahead and plug in our LED light strip. These will be in the top of the cabinet, but we can snake those through in a minute. And the USB cord for the power for our screen. Now we can go ahead and plug in the power for the screen. We'll worry about all this excess USB wire here in a moment. We can go ahead and fit our controller panel on, make sure everything clears. And I'm going to go ahead and attach it with some M2.5 by 10 millimeter screws. So the front of the controller's on. Go ahead and pull out your controller board and your lights. And now's a great time to plug in the HDMI cable to the orange pie from the screen because you probably won't get another chance. We can just kind of let this set in front for a moment. Now the moment of truth. It's time to put the top on. It should just slide on like this, but you definitely want the front to be as flush as possible because that's how the screen lines up. And I don't want mine to be super permanent, so we're going to stick with the hot glue like James suggested, and just put a couple of dabs on here to keep it in place. After the top's on, your controller PCB, you can pretty much just tack glue that anywhere you want that's out of the way. You just don't want it touching any of the metal leads. Up here on the side is as good a place as any. Then we can run our LED lights up into here. And these are the kind of the sticky tape on the back, so you can just stick the lights anywhere around in here. Just make sure you leave room enough to stick on your bezel. The lights are in. You could throw some hot glue on there if you wanted to, but mine seem to stick pretty good. There's definitely enough lights in there. James also suggests that this is a good place up here to store a lot of the extra USB cable. So we can go ahead and do that. 
that looks a lot better with that out of the way. And now we should be able to just tilt the screen in there. Be mindful of that HDMI cable, because it goes on the top, and the ribbon cable goes on the bottom. We'll swing it in to miss the controller knob here. Snap in, real snug, right there. Looking good. And then I use four M2 by eight millimeter screws to snug the screen bezel down. Then we can put a back cover on, just like this. I'm gonna use some two millimeter by 10 millimeter screws. Got that on there. Now all we have to do is get some artwork and put something up here for our marquee. Now James says he used photo paper to make a graphic for the top of this. I don't have any photo paper, but we could probably make something cool. But we are gonna to need to glue this about right there, and then we should be able to slide it in from the bottom. So I'm just gonna use hot glue in here and try not to interfere with sliding that in. That'll probably work. How about that? That actually doesn't look as bad as I thought it might. But will it power up first time? Let's find out. The marquee's on. So it looks like we're booting just fine, but there appears to be no sound. There should be sound playing during this startup and in these menus. So we're gonna have to try to fix that. So my guess is, as far as sound goes, that it's trying to output to the HDMI of the screen and not to the analog on the Orange Pi. So we need to get in SSH and correct that. Now, after this thing's all buttoned up, it's kind of hard to do. My recommendation to you is to try to hit that RJ45 jack with a network cable and get this thing on the network, rather than trying to get a screen and a keyboard in there. And probably the easiest way to do that is to remove this button down here and hit it with one of those cables that's somewhat stiff. You can just kind of reach it in there. So I'm gonna pop this button out like so, snake my network cable in there like that and let's boot up and that'll put it on the network. After it's booted up and it's on the network, you should be able to come down here, do a backslash, backslash, retro, and there's only one O, orange pie, dot local. So R-E-T-R-O-R-A-N-G-E-P-I dot local. Remember, only one O. Hit enter. And this is gonna bring up the file systems that have been shared. If it asks for a username and password, you can use root as the username, and orange pie, all lowercase, one word, is the password. Now this is really only good if you wanna add games. You can add your ROMs while you're on the network, so this is one way to add ROMs, but what we really wanna do is to get in SSH. You can use that same host name in PuTTY. So we'll open up PuTTY, R-E-T-R-O-R-E-N-G-E-P-I dot local. And yes, we'll agree to the key. And again, you can log in root, orange pie, all one word. And now we can get in and look around, look at a few different things if we want to, but we can see what's keeping the audio from working. And I'll leave these commands in the description below so that you can grab them there, so you don't have to follow as I type. But we need to edit asound.config in etc. So first let's make a copy of it, cp slash etc asound.conf, and let's copy it to slash etc slash asound.conf underscore old. This will save a copy. And now let's edit asound.conf, nano, and then the file location. And here, I'm just gonna wipe everything out. And we're gonna paste all this right here. I found this online. Basically what it does is it creates both interfaces that you can use at the same time, along with some mixers, and it's gonna run both the outputs at the same time, so you don't have to choose them between HDMI and analog. All this will be in the description if you need to use it. Your configuration might work just fine, but mine was not. So we'll control X to exit, we'll hit yes to save and hit enter. And now we need to shut down and then reboot. So we need to do shutdown dash H for halt space now. We're powered off. I'm gonna go ahead and pull my network cable out. We'll slide our button back in. And now when we power on, we should have audio. Looks like the splash screen's working. The menu music is working. And with any luck, we can go down to our game, and the music for it is working as well. Let's go down to Nintendo again. Bomb Sweeper. We'll start up a new game, and it looks like it's working. Audio should be all fixed. Side tip, if you push Start and your Enable button, that will exit your game. And there you go, a mini 3D printed arcade cabinet that you could load all the classic arcade games on that you ever wanted. 
A big thanks to James again over at Print and Play. You did a great job on this, my friend, and I will get a lot of entertainment out of it. Please check out all of his information below. I hope you liked this video or you found it helpful. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribing to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.